Today we are going to talk about determinants of GFR or determinants of glomerular filtration rate. GFR or the glomerular filtration rate is the rate. It is the rate at which filtration is occurring. What is filtration? Filtration is basically the first step in urine formation. As we are discussing the process of urine formation and we have discussed multiple times that the first step in urine formation is filtration of blood. Filtration of blood due to which the filtrate of or the fluid coming out of the glomerular uh, capillaries into the Bowman's capsule and that filtrate then moves through the nephron tubules and forms the urine. Now we were discussing multiple topics regarding the filtration process. We started discussing that inside the kidney there are thousands of nephron. Each nephron basically receives the blood through afferent arteriole. The afferent arteriole brings the blood into the glomerulus the glomerulus is basically a bunch of capillaries in which pressure is generated. Due to the pressure, due to high pressure, fluid in the blood moves out into the Bowman's capsule. The remaining blood goes into the efferent arteriole, then moves into the peritubular capillaries. Then some substances are reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries. Some substances are secreted into the nephron tubules. And this is the process of urine formation. Now, the filtration process, the filtration process which we started discussing in detail, it occurs at the glomerular capillary membrane. We discussed that this membrane here, it is basically made of three layers, the endothelium, the basement membrane and the epithelium. Now, different factors basically contribute in the filtration process. For example, different substances present in the blood, the, 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 the radius, their, their molecular weight and their charge they basically determine that whether they will be filtered from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule or they will not be filtered. Similarly, their, their, their chemical nature also determine whether they will be reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries or not or whether they will be secreted into the nephron or nephron tubules or not. Now, these are the things which we discussed in detail. Then we discussed the filtration fraction and the uh, GFR. We discussed that GFR, basically, GFR is the the filtration rate the glomerular filtration rate it is the rate it is the rate at which plasma is filtered and then we discussed the filtration fraction which is the the fraction of the plasma not all the plasma that is going through the glomerulus will be filtered but a fraction of it will be filtered into the Bowman's capsule that fraction is the filtration fraction and the rate the speed the speed with which it is filtered is the GFR or the glomerular filtration rate now there are a lot of determinants of the GFR, the glomerular filtration rate. These determinants basically helps to determine the rate or the speed of the filtration at this level. Now, we have enlarged this area. We have enlarged this area and we have simplified this di diagram here. We see that this is the afferent arteriole and it has been represented here. The afferent arteriole, it is bringing the blood into the glomerulus. Now, the glomerulus has been simplified and enlarged. The blood going back is going through the efferent arterioles. Now, what happens in the glomerulus in the, in the Bowman's capsule? How the GFR, how the rate of the filtration, the glomerular filtration is determined. Now, those are the things which we are going to discuss. The determinants or the factors which will determine the rate of the GFR or the GFR, they include the pressures, they include the pressure which push the fluid out of the capillary, out of the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. They also include the pressures or the forces which pull the fluid from the Bowman's capsule into the glomerulus. Similarly, there are forces which push the fluid, which push the filtrate or which prevents or stops the movement of the filtrate from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. These forces, these forces are the determinants of the GFR. Depending upon the changing changes in these forces, changes in GFR will occur. Now, to simplify this thing, GFR basically is the product of uh, glomerular capillary filtration coefficient and the net filtration. GFR, GFR or the glomerular filtration rate, it is the product of the glomerular capillary filtration coefficient, filtration coefficient which is represented by the uh, KF and the net filtration. The net filtration, the net filtration basically is the sum of all the forces acting here. The net filtration is the sum of all the forces acting here. We will discuss each and every force in detail, but here we are going to summarize those forces. Now, the first force which is acting here is the glomerular hydrostatic pressure. Glomerular hydrostatic pressure. This force is basically represented with the PG. As we discussed, GFR is the product of coefficient into the net filtration. And net filtration is the sum of all these forces. The first force is the 
PG, the glomerular hydrostatic pressure. This pressure basically is due to the fluid in the glomerulus and this force, this pressure is pushing the fluid out from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. And the, the value of this pressure, this force is 60 mm of mercury. So glomerular hydrostatic pressure is one determinant of the GFR or one determinant of the glomerular filtration rate and its value is 60 millimeter of mercury. This factor, this force is pushing the fluid out into the Bowman's capsule or it is favoring the filtration process. Another force acting in the glomerular capillary is the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure. Now this pressure, hydrostatic pressure is due to the fluid component. This colloid osmotic pressure is due to the proteins. Now proteins in the glomerulus is basically pushing, uh, pulling, this is pulling the fluid towards itself or towards the uh, capillaries. So it is rather opposing the filtration. It is opposing the filtration and not favoring. So this glomerular colloid osmotic pressure is presented by uh, this pi G. Now another force is the Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure. Now the Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure is due to the fluid component of the Bowman's capsule and this is basically opposing the fluid this is basically opposing the filtration process or this is basically opposing the, the the movement the movement of the fluid from glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. Now these two forces are acting in the glomerulus. This force is acting in the Bowman's capsule. Now another this Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure is represented with PB. This is represented with PB. Now the PB, the hydrostatic pressure in the Bowman's capsule and the colloid osmotic pressure in the glomerulus, they are subtracted. They are subtracted from the glomerular hydrostatic pressure because both of these pressure, both of these pressure, they are opposing the filtration process. They are not allowing the fluid to move from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule. So they are subtracted from the glomerular hydrostatic pressure. Now there is another force which is due to proteins in the Bowman's capsule and that is known as the Bowman's capsule colloid osmotic pressure. Just like the uh, glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure, this is represented with pi B. And this force basically, this force is basically due to proteins in the Bowman's capsule and it is pulling the fluid into the Bowman's capsule but normally there are no protein or uh, nearly uh, almost uh, minimal proteins so this force can be ignored for practical purposes so the sum normally the sum of these pressures normally is 60 60 is the uh, hydrostatic pressure minus 18 which is basically Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure minus 32 which is glomerular colloid osmotic pressure. We subtract these two forces from 60 because the, these two forces are opposing the filtration process while we add it because this pressure, this force is uh, uh, forcing or this is basically favoring the filtration process and this colloid osmotic, sorry, the colloid pressure, uh, the plasma colloid or the, uh, sorry, the Bowman's capsule colloid osmotic pressure, the pi B, this can be ignored, this can be ignored because this normally is zero. Now this value, this value which we get here is 10. This is 10. 60 minus 50. 18 plus 32 is 50. So sub subtracting 50 from 60 is 10. So the net filtration is 10 mm of mercury and this net filtration is towards the Bowman's capsule. So filter, uh, filtered fluid or the filtration normally is from the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule and the net filtration pressure is around 10. Now if we, uh, if we get the product of the net filtration and the uh, capillary filtration coefficient, we will get the, uh, the we will get the value of GFR because GFR, the glomerular filtration rate, is the product of capillary filtration coefficient and the net filtration. Now, in the coming lectures, we will talk about the capillary in the capillary uh, filtration coefficient, and we will also discuss the factors which increases or decreases this filtration coefficient. But for this lecture, we were just talking about the determinants of the GFR. In the coming lectures, we will discuss these determinants in detail. But so far, we have discussed that these forces, the glomerular hydrostatic pressure acting in the glomerulus, glomerular colloid osmotic pressure, which is also acting in the glomerulus, and the Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure active in the Bowman's capsule. These are the main determinants of the GFR and their net, their net pressure. Their net, the net filtration pressure when summed up when summed up is around 10 millimeter of mercury and if we uh, get the product of the net filtration pressure and the capillary filtration coefficient we will get the GFR so that's all about the determinants of the GFR in the coming lecture we will talk about these factors in detail thanks a lot for watching the video